We are now at the third part of the course about com community detection in networks and in this part we, are, we will look at the application of some community detection algorithms on real life examples. So our first example is the, the one presented previously of the network, the trade network of the EU regions. Bear in mind that a node represents a, a, a European Union region and a link between two nodes exists if one of the no, one of the one of the regions is an important import or export partner to the other region. So here as I, as we said previously we colored the the nodes with respect to the countries of the regions they represent and we saw that it was at least visually it looked like a good clustering. But the question here is can we detect something else? In, in other terms, if we apply a clustering algorithm, can we detect some unexpected patterns that the countries would not reveal? For example, could we see some effect of the European integration on trade? Or could we see some lack of cohesion within countries? Let's see. So here we applied the Louvain clustering on this network. And here the colors now represent the clusters found by the Louvain method. And as we can see here, actually most of the countries are, good, are also found by the Louvain algorithms, but we also see some changes. For example, we see that Italy is not, is not one coherent, um, one coherent uh, entity at, anymore. It's now divided into three parts and one of the parts is actually even part of the Austrian, Austrian cluster. Same here for Germany, we observe that actually it's not um, one coherent part either and actually we see that southern, southwestern Germany is more connected to France than to the rest of Germany. So actually this, this clustering method revealed some unexpected or at least some patterns that are not revealed by the administrative, let's say, boundaries. Another example here is the spin glass algorithm applied to the firm ownership network. So here each node represents a city and each link represents the number of firm ownership linkages between two cities. So here several clustering algorithms have been applied by the others in order to uh, find the one that yields the best modularity. And the spin glass clustering algorithm actually is the one that, lead, that yields the best one. Here again, the clustering recovers groups of highly economically interdependent cities. For example, countries such as Japan, Italy, France, or for example, economic regions such as Northern and Eastern Europe or North America. And here we have the two last examples of the phone call networks and the commuters networks between the different municipalities of the canton of Vaud. Um, in the first network of the phone, of the phone calls, uh, two municipalities are linked if there is if there is at least one call per month between two landlines located in each municipality. And in this network of the commuters, two municipalities are linked if there is at least one commuter between both municipalities. We applied the Louvain clustering method to both the phone and commuter networks. And here, the colors on the maps correspond to the clusters found by the Louvain algorithm. Globally, what we see is that phone and commuter networks reveal quite close communities. And in comparison with the administrative districts, we see actually that the Valéjou and Norvodois form two distinct clusters, whereas they are only one administrative district. The, there is a quite reconfiguration in, on the side of the Riviera and Chablis, 
because normally here uh, Riviera Chablais is composed of actually a half of a district of Riviera Peinot, which is normally one district, and here the half of it is integrated to Chablais, which is normally the district of Aigle. Um, and we also observe that the Gros de Vaux and West Lausannois, which are two separate districts, are integrated to the cluster of Lausanne. And this shows the catchment area of the city. 